This is the effect that I'm going for. It's a Canadian smocking, but it gives a woven effect to the fabric. I'll need to mark up my grids on my fabric and take into account that you'll need approximately twice the amount of fabric because it shrinks so much as you're sewing. So um, get your ruler, get your pen, get your fabric and let's get going. To get a design in this kind of size, I need to mark out a grid on my fabric of two inches square. If you're going to use a um, an ink that disappears, make sure it's one that you disappear with water, not one that uh, disappears of its own accord, because you probably find it disappearing before you've actually finished your project. Um, but I'm just going to use a permanent ink so I can show you where I'm going. And to be honest, your pen marks and your stitch marks are all on the back of the fabric, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to draw out a grid all the way across the fabric of two inches square. Don't know what that is in centimetres. We'll go for inches. And it's important that your squares are accurate and square because if you're slightly out with your measurements then your weaving won't look quite right, it won't sit right and there is a chance that you could see the stitches behind the weaving effect. So this is an important part to measure it right. So make sure you've got the, the right type of ruler and these grid rulers are so easy to use. Okay, so that's my two inches stripe that way. Then we'll start in the opposite direction, making sure it's all square. Go all the way across. You can do this pattern on a much smaller scale and it makes it look very much more intricate. But the reason I'm doing the two inches is purely so that you can, you can see what I'm doing. So have a play with it. Um, ooh, you'll find um, your fabric works better if it's a finer fabric. Um, this is a, a heavy satin and a fabric with a shine on it looks nice because it really catches the folds of the weave. Heavy fabrics, cottons, curtain fabrics don't tend to have the same kind of effect. But again, you can, you can play with fabrics. Do a very small section to start with. Right. And I think plain rather than pattern works best as well. So there's my grid. What I need to do now is to put a, a diagonal line starting at the box on the end from one corner to another. And I'm going to do that on each alternate box. Miss one, line. Miss one, line. Miss one. That's the end. And then on the second section, I'm going to go in the same diagonal but on like a brick effect of the boxes. So miss one line, miss one. I got that one. Mm. Yeah, I thought you did. Then Which I'm going to draw a diagonal line on every alternate box. So I'll start on the end one and just go from one corner to another, miss a box, next box, miss one, next one. Make sure I join at the corners. It doesn't matter that my line's not perfectly straight, that's not why I'm doing it. Miss one, the next box, miss one and the next box. Then on the second line I'm going to go for where the missing box is here, the one above it, but do the line in the opposite direction like that. Miss one, diagonal line. Miss one, diagonal line. Miss one, diagonal line. Miss one and again. And then carry on over the whole of the fabric. So again the one that's missed here diagonal that way. So it gives almost like a, a chevron kind of effect and it's important that you mark this out before you start sewing because when it all starts to crumple up as you're stitching you you need that kind of guideline you can't just do it kind of by eye when you start sewing. So I'll do that over the whole of the sections. It's actually quite quick when you get going with it it's not um, painstaking. Right, and then we need to start to sew. It doesn't matter what colour the thread is, I suppose if you've got the same colour thread would be best. Um, so I'm going to start on the corner here. And I'm going to pick up just a couple of stitches and secure that. And I'm going right up to the end of the fabric. If you've got enough fabric, then, then leave a gap of a couple of inches all the way around the border. Now my thread's secure. 
I'm going to pick up the opposite end of my diagonal line just with a small stitch and pull it up taut. Like so. So my corners are meeting. Then I'm going to sew over four times to secure the thread. And this needs to be very secure because if you're making something like a cushion cover, you may wash it so you don't want the stitches coming undone. And if any do come undone, it's on the inside so you can't actually kind of mend it. I'm going to go back to the bottom of the second diagonal. I'm not cutting my thread. I'm just going to leave it loose because it saves thread. And again, another couple of stitches right in the corner of that diagonal to secure it. Take your thread across to the other side of that diagonal and pick that side up. And then pull those two corners together. Make sure that the back of this isn't caught in to the thread. So you just want to catch the corners together. And again, just over sew three or four times to keep that in place, make sure it's all tight, locked off, not going to come undone. Then on to the next one. I will snip through all of these threads afterwards, but there's no need to now. Back into the corner, secure the thread. The opposite side of the diagonal, hook that over and pull it together. This is where, as I said, it's important to actually mark out these diagonals so that you can see them because this is where it starts to get a little bit confusing as your fabric starts to smock together. So if those lines weren't there I'd never be able to remember where the grids are because you can see it's starting to look quite complicated. So again on to the next box Pick it up, secure with a couple of stitches, over to the other side of the diagonal line and pull that together. Now once I go to the end of the first row of boxes before I go on to the second row, but I think you've got the idea. But when I go to the second row, I'll do that now, you can see this is the diagonal that goes in the opposite direction. So again, I'll go back to the first section here and secure my stitches. Remember, this thread I'm going to snip afterwards, so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit tight at the moment. Follow that diagonal and pick it up on the other corner and draw those two pieces together and stitch across the top. You won't see this on the on the front side. And then find that diagonal line, it's in there somewhere, right in the corner of the boxes, and this is the line that goes in the opposite direction, remember, so over to that side. Push the fabric behind there if it starts to get trapped. And stitch. I'll just do one more, then I'll show you how it's starting to make the woven pattern on the reverse side. I think it's so clever. So a couple of stitches there over to this side. Pull it together. And stitch. It's quite an easy smocking actually because you don't see the stitches. I just broke my thread there so I'm going to go back over and over and over just to secure that section. So I'll just cut my thread at this point so that you can see how it's growing, then I'll carry on. So this is what it's looking like on the front side, and you can see this um, woven effect, the basket weave effect, starting to grow. When you do turn it, you'll need to have a play with it and just manoeuvre it around so it gives the right effect. But if your stitches are perfectly um, aligned and your boxes are perfectly square and your measurements are good, then that will start to build up that woven section. So I'll just carry on with this for a while. So I'm just finishing off the last row now and you'll see how much the fabric shrunk 
it looks, um, if you were to put this piece on top of the piece that you started with, it'll probably fill about a quarter of the space. It really does shrink, so make sure you've got enough fabric to start with. So I've just got the final couple of diagonals. And then you'll need to check that you haven't missed any. But you'll see that with um, the pattern not matching when you turn it over. So, final two. And it does actually get quite quick. You get into almost like a, a choreographed routine with it. I wouldn't say you could do it without watching, but you, you do kind of get quick with it. And then the final section here. You'll need a lot of thread as well. You do get through a lot. It's worth it. And then just draw that up. And again, just making sure that every area is secure. Because I don't want to have to go back again at a later date. So I'll snap off the end of my thread. Snip all of these threads in between, because they may pull, they may distort the pattern a little bit. That's it. And then when you turn over, this is what it looks like. Now, you, you may have to manoeuvre the pleats, the folds, just a little bit. I, I quite like them, to be honest, when they're not absolutely perfect, because when they look too perfect, they look as though you've just woven fabric together, not smocked it. And it's nice to see the texture, which is where uh, it's an advantage having a fabric that has a satin finish to it. Now, when you've finished this section, um, to edge it, I take out... Whoops the pleats to the edge of my work and just pin those in place like so just keep it you know so everything looks quite neat and regimented on the sides it, it does kind of fall into place I have to say there's another they're, they're almost like tubes pin that one um, and then I would hand stitch or sew on your sewing machine a line all the way around the edge just to keep that in place. So you can see here that that falls quite neatly. Your um, The edge of your cushion would probably be here. So you don't see any of the, the edge bits. So again, just make sure you've got enough fabric to cover the edges. Um, and then I think you've got an absolutely stunning cushion cover. Remember you can make this tighter, make it smaller, use the different sizes of squares. This was a two inch square and create lots of different effects for maybe a pelmet, tie backs, cushion covers, tablecloths, placemats or even dresses.